Coming up on the Get Loud podcast, presented by SeatGeek, the official ticketing partner of the Washington Commanders. Mock draft time. It's time, finally. I'm glad it's over. It's time. We're going to do that. Yep. We're going to talk about things we're watching and most hated commercial. Hated it. <laughs> he took us back. <laughs> How you doing, everyone? It is the Get Loud Podcast. As we stay loud over here, We Jink. stay loud. Fred Smoot, Michael Jenkins, NFL Draft Week is finally here. Don't you get I'll be so happy when it finally gets here because the two months, three yes. months before it, it's nerve-wracking, man. It Every is. day it's just, we love them, we hate them, we love them, we hate them. It's just terrible. Plus, these teams flip-flop all over the place. Like, last week, the Patriots were like, we're open for business. Send us a deal. And then yesterday, they were like, hey... We're staying at three. Don't bother. Like, hey, first of all, this is lying season, Jinx. Yeah. This is when it franchises is. get put up and promoted for telling lies. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> if you leave a couple breadcrumbs, people mm. will follow. That's right. Every source has some sort of motivation. Yes. Right? Like, these things aren't leaked for no reason. Thank you, You my know friend. what I mean? Thank you, my friend. Like, they're it's out a, there for a reason. It's a method to the madness. Exactly. Yes, most but definitely. I'm like you. I like to talk about it as much as anyone else. But after a yeah. while, it's like, listen, we know the deal. I, I get fatigued. Right, it's yeah. time to it's time to have a draft. Yeah, so we're ready and, to have a draft. And if I do one more draft simulation, I'm gonna lose my mind. Do you do a lot? I do. Do you? I do. <laughs> I've I've caught myself doing draft simulations in traffic. Like, what, what's going on? <laughs> like, it, it, it it can be addictive. Oh yeah, yeah, it can be very. You addictive. can go all over the place with it the, because there's endless possibilities. Yeah, yes, right? it is. Yes, it is. So we're gonna bring on London Fletcher here in just a few minutes. Yeah, we're gonna bring him in via remote. We're gonna have a mock draft here on the show. It's gonna be awesome. Ah, uh, I beat him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the wiser. Well, the thing about it, I've been doing this so long. <laughs> right. <laughs> so before we get into that, what'd you do this weekend? Uh, most definitely, I took my daughter down to Boo Williams. It's a uh, basketball camp that's in Hampton, uh, Virginia. Mm-hmm. All of the best AAU teams across the nation came. I got to meet Don Staley. My oh. daughter played well. So I enjoyed my birthday weekend by crying in the stands as my daughter hit 29 points and I watched oh bucket God. after bucket it. and then the trash talking she was doing it would just chip off the old block. Oh, she you know? trash talks too? Oh, yes! <laughs> she has the gospel, Jinx. It's in her. She can't help it. Now, did you teach her or did she just pick it up for no, she's No, she's emotionally attached to the game. Okay. So when she makes a play, she gets up, she's energetic. That's just who she is. She's a smooth. It's, the <laughs> fire, a smooth. The fire true. burns within. My friend? Yeah. Yes. And 10th grade, yes. we're getting into, if she's on the AAU circuit, yeah. oh, yes. we're getting into serious recruiting season, I'm, too. I'm serious recruiting. I've talked to tons of private schools. Like I said, I got to talk to Dunn Staley, Michigan. Like It was like it was like 40 universities at this camp, So I mean, yeah. at this uh, tournament. So it was crazy, man. And, and it feels good to me because there's a guy who's been through this process. I was just going to say, yeah. To see my daughters and my sons going through it. I now I know what parents say when they say, just to watch you do it makes me feel good. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, I was reading Dawn Staley. She was talking about how well she's recruited in South yeah. Carolina. And yeah. one of the things she said was, one of the first things we look for is, does this player get along with their parents? Does yeah. this player respect their parents? Because yeah. if they do, we know we're not going to have any problems problem with them. With yeah. and, and that's true. That's true, especially when you're dealing with teens. Teens yeah. go through the combustible, emotional. Like, I would tell my, my daughter now, like, Control your emotions. Mm-hmm. Funnel them, use them, but control them. Is she saying things like, I took that personally? Oh, no, she did take it personally. It was one, 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 one young lady playing for Russell Westbrook team, okay. team Why Not, and she was gifted. She hit like 25 points in the first half. So the coach from my daughter's team said, told my daughter, no, you check her. My daughter checked her from – Full court pressure the rest of the game. Is that right? She only scored four points. Shut her down. Then in the second half, my daughter hit 19 in the second half. She had already had like 10 in the first Ooh. half. So it, to see her go head to head like that and take that challenge on, mm-hmm. yeah, proud. Yeah, as you should be. Also, yeah, I, I did text you, but happy belated birthday, well, my friend. Thank you. You know, the thing about it, you know, when I, when I got diagnosed with Benjamin Buzz's disease uh, and I noticed <laughs> that I was getting younger, not older. That's what I look forward to birthdays. You know, when you get older, you try to run away from your birthday. You embrace them. I embrace them. <laughs> yes. You know how it goes. I do know how it goes. Let's pay some bills, and then we're going to have a mock draft. The Get Loud Podcast is brought to you by Bet365, the official sport and best partner of the Washington Commanders. Bet on a range of NFL markets with Bet365 app. Craft your own personalized bet slip with parlay. Access thousands of games with live streaming. Place your bet before the match or during the game. 
really up to you. Download the Bet365 app today and join 80 million members worldwide. 21 Age 21 plus only must be physically located in Virginia. Gambling problem call or text 1 800 Gambler. M W A A. We don't travel to escape life. We travel so life don't escape us. We dream of any place in the world, and in the blink of an eye, we're there. That's the wonder of flight. All you have to do is decide where to. Dulles International Airport. Let your imagination soar. Book your adventure today at flydullis.com slash nonstop. Crushed it. The gospel. Oh, it's finally time. It's draft time. It's draft. We've been talking about it. Now let's have our own mock draft, and we got to have some help. Yeah. So we bring in Washington grade London Fletcher to the show. I'm going to put it all in the air right now. The future Hall of Fame and famer London Fletcher, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Mache, when it comes to this dual. You know, because I'm more Kuiper, and he's more Mache. So at the end of the day, I've been there. I've done that. I've called out many great draft picks. I can't wait to go head to head with London. I think McShay, at, at this point in time, McShay is on the uprise. I think it's time for Kyper <laughs> to take a back seat. To <laughs> so, basically, you're going to take a back seat to me in this mock draft. <laughs> well, let's do out, my friend. Also, Mel Kuyper's had the same haircut for like 40 years. Uh, it's vintage. Oh, it's vintage. It's, it's vintage. can't cut it now. Like, like, that's what yeah. I'm going to do for Halloween. I'm going to dress up, dress up like Mel Kuyper <laughs> and just knock on people's doors and start uh, ringing off draft picks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, we I start at... That. <laughs> oh my God! You never know. Let's remember this. So we all right, so I can do Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So number one, obviously Chicago Bears are trying yeah. to pick they got from the Carolina Panthers, and we know it's Caleb Williams. Oh, it's Caleb Williams. Like I said, they turned that sheet in three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. They knew who they want. Quarterback star franchise. Now you got a once in a lifetime talent right there. And I have to say this: besides Washington, Chicago has the best setup for a rookie quarterback. Two starting wide receivers, two number ones, tight end with commit, a uh, running game, mm-hmm. offensive line. It's set up for success. Caleb Williams, first pick. Smooth, you said they turned the card in three weeks ago. I think they turned that card in as soon as they got that number one overall draft pick solidified with the Carolina Panthers being the worst team in the NFL. Caleb Williams, number one pick overall. Not, it's not even a question mark when you get a talent like this guy. You know, you see mm-hmm. the Patrick Mahomes ability, the, the ability to – make all different types of throws, the all-platform throws, and just the strong arm and what he, uh, what what attributions that he has as a quarterback. There's no question, Caleb Williams to the Chicago Bears first overall. Is there any concern at all? And yes. this has gone away over the past few weeks about yeah. him. You've heard the narrative that he's soft, right? I don't, you, you saw him in the stands man, crying with his mom. Is that yeah. overblown or not? First of all, I cried with my mama in the stands. So what? At the end of the day, can he play football? Can he help you win championships? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So at the end of the day, like that's that's what happens in the draft, especially as we get closer to yeah. it. Mm-hmm. They're looking for every reason to knock you mm-hmm. or not to draft you as high. They're not looking for reasons why. They're looking for reasons why not. In my head, Chicago don't care about any of that they understand where they at and who they have man it's crazy i was just having a conversation this past weekend with just some guys who have don't have any idea never met caleb williams like oh man i think you know the bears i think his father could be a problem like how do you know what (laughs) his father what kind of problem is going to be like all these types of things so all this just misinformation and things that are put out there you're worrying about hey is he going to be a diva he's going to do that you mentioned this move. The man can play football. There's no question. Mm-hmm. You draft him and you don't worry about it. You've done enough background on him. And you know who you're getting as a player and a person. Yeah. Most definitely. You know who his second cousin is, though, right? <laughs> who is his second? You know, they, they, they bring up everything. I know. They right? bring up everything. It's, everything. Yeah. It's, okay, number two, guys. We know the deal. Yeah. It's the commanders. Yeah. It's either Drake May, Jane uh, Daniels, although yeah. there has, you know how it is as we get closer to draft time. Now we're hearing, oh, the analytics, they love J.J. McCarthy. At the end of the day, an empty wagon makes a lot of noise when it's dragging behind you. And that's all it is. Like I said, the draft starts at number two. Mm-hmm. Like it, Nobody knows what we're going to do. And that's, that's the great thing about being a part of a business that's being ran the right way. Mm-hmm. And I think it's shocking people that we're running things the right way. Now, my choice, I think it's a, it's a toss-up here. It's, it's, it's what you like. Do you like the bigger body? Do you like the, the slender, the faster frame, the, the, the more quick twitch? But if I had to pick right now, 
I would say Washington takes Jaden Daniels with the second pick because he has some intangibles and things that cannot be taught. And and if you got an offensive line that you're trying to build up slowly, he will get you those those off kilt the first downs with his leg yeah. while you getting that offensive line where you want it to be. I think it's Jaden Daniels here. It could easily be Drake May. I'm giving a slight slight advantage to Jaden Daniels with number two. Coming to Washington, get your number five jerseys ready. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I think they choose Jaden Daniels. London, where are you going? I'm gonna go with um, I'm going with Jaden Daniels, and here's the reason why I go with Jaden Daniels. We, we, you mentioned all the all the different attributes and all the things that he brings to the table, the elite talent, the arm strength, all those things. When you talk to Dan Quinn, they're gonna ask him which quarterback would give you more problems, and going against a quarterback with the talent that Jaden Daniels has. It gives defenses fits. Yeah, Drake mm -hmm. made bigger body and all that, and you love his arm. But Jaden Daniels, he can, he makes all the throws, but then the off-schedule things, the ability to extend plays to, to create on his own, it gives defenses nightmares. He's an, he's an absolute nightmare to dis, to uh, game plan for. For me, it's no question that Jaden Daniels is the pick. Mm -hmm. How much do both of you guys worry about, if at all, yeah. when you compare May and Daniels? Now, they're different quarterbacks, but yeah. one of the knocks on Daniels is, look, he's slight. Yeah. yeah. So you you worry about him taking an NFL hit? No, no, no. I don't because it's two things that put on put weight on athletes. Okay. Stakes <laughs> and weights. I, that, <laughs> that's, that's what he going to have. Like, the one thing I always tell people, just because he walked in the building that way, mm -hmm. that don't mean he walking out the building that's that way. That's true. So he's going to get bigger. They understand that. And the one thing they going to tell him all the time, protect yourself at all costs. So him learning how to slide, when to slide, when to run out of mm -hmm. bounds, taking advantage of these things. And then we got we got a quarterback guru in the building who's had these quarterbacks yeah. that play like that. So he will be able to teach him how to, one, protect himself. Two, I'm not worried about the weight. Stakes and weights, baby. It always <laughs> helps. DC Prime. Uh, listen, we, Jinx, man, you realize the NFL, you can't even hit these quarterbacks nowadays. They got bubble wrap. <laughs> well, that's true. It, it doesn't matter what he weighs. I mean, Smooth was a smaller guy when he came into the league. I don't know what you – were you about 170, 180 when you uh, – uh, Yeah, I was, I was 173, 173. Yeah, and, and he had to tackle guys like Brandon Jacobs. It didn't go well for him, but he did. He did tackle. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the effort, London. It's all about the effort. <laughs> hey, but uh, no, I digress. But in terms of his, 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 his weight – so I, I expect him to gain probably five pounds this year, another five pounds next year. Now all of a sudden, he's up to 220 pounds. That's plenty of yeah. weight, plenty of size. And as he continues to eat those steaks and weights, he'll gain even more. <laughs> he'll gain even more weight. Hey, London, do you? My comp for him, the more I watch him, he reminds me of Randall Cunningham. Ooh. Like it's a, it's a lot yeah. of Randall. It, the, the long release, uh, quicker and, and faster than you think, know how to elude. He eludes not to run all the time. He eludes to steal pass the ball. You know, I can see that that comp with uh, with Randall Cunningham, but I think Randall was even kind of even more wiry than than Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Kind of spindly, so to speak. I think um, I think Daniels has a little bit more mask, and his frame looks like he can add a little bit more mass on it. At three, yeah. we had the Patriots, and they're just waiting for the quarterback crumbs. Yeah, they're just going to wait to see how the first couple of picks go. And I think they're going to go quarterback. Or do you see them going? I I feel like they take whoever the Commanders don't take between May and Daniels. I feel like that's where the Patriots I don't go. think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. Somebody had to throw a loophole in this draft. Oh, let's do like, it. At the end of the day, I think at three, the Patriots walk up to the podium and say, "We're trading." down i think they understand they need more than just a quarterback okay they need pieces all over their roster and and, and you know the haul you can get for three think about it I, right now i got yeah. them trading with the vikings they get the vikings 11 pick they get the vikings first round uh 23rd pick and they get the vikings second round pick that gives them a chance to reshape their roster mm -hmm. the vikings move up and who do vikings move up for drake may really? yes <laughs> the vikings move up oh. for one drake May, you see what they offense could do. You got Justin Jefferson. You got a run game. You got a head coach that's offensive-minded. I, I played for the Vikings for two years. Drake May has Viking written all over him. Eric the Red is what they would call him <laughs> when they do the skull up there. Listen to me. At the end of the day, Vikings at number three, take 
Drake May. Really? Okay. See, I got a theory on that. What do you have to say, London? All right, Smooth. I'm with you with the New England Patriots realizing, hey, we're in a great position. We need to acquire more than just a quarterback. I got him trade with the Vikings also. However, yeah. I got him taking J.J. McCarthy. There's, no! and, and listen, I promise you, I went and watched J.J. Uh, McCarthy again. I'm like, man, why are so many people so high on this guy? When you watch him, and Michigan, you know, they, Harbaugh loves to run a football. When you watch yep. J.J. McCarthy and his ability to make big-time throws into tight windows, he has great athleticism. You know he's a winner. I think he's a better fit for the Vikings offense than Drake May in that that Kyle Shanahan bootleg, naked boots, play action pass. He's already mm-hmm. well versed in the pro style offense. He's the better fit for the for the Vikings than uh, Drake May. I think they trade up and take JJ McCarthy. Ooh, I think the Vikings are going to move up too, but I yeah. think they make a trade with the Chargers at five, five because yeah. the Patriots need a quarterback. The Chargers don't need a quarterback. They have Justin Herbert, so yeah. they also need pieces. So yeah. I see the Vikings moving up, too, but I see them moving up at five, or I think the Patriots need a QV. Yeah. But J.J. McCarthy at three, if there's one quarterback in this draft whose stock keeps rising, it's yeah. definitely McCarthy. If the more, like London say, the more you watch his film, he didn't get to throw the ball yeah. 40 times. He got to throw the ball 20 times, but they was 20 pro passes. Mm-hmm. He was in a pro-style offense, and it's a couple of those passes where he's throwing it where pros do. He's throwing – they playing man under against the tight end. He's throwing it to the back of the linebacker's helmet. Like, you can see these throws. He's mm-hmm. a tight window guy. But the question is with J.J., can he be the reason you win? Or is he just a piece of the puzzle? Right. Yeah, so that's the thing with J.J. And that's why I give Drake May just the edge a little bit because his ceiling to me is just a tad bit high. You agree with that, London? I'm, I'm – no, I'm going with J.J. McCarthy. I'm telling you, Smooth. I've watched this. I've gone back multiple times because I'm an Ohio State fan first and foremost. So I wanted J.J. McCarthy to suck, first and foremost. I want to know what the fans think. <laughs> you know what? I really want to know what the fans think. This would be a great one for the fans to weigh in on. Let's move to four. All right. Arizona. Uh, they have a quarterback. Do they stay with Kyler and go receiver? What do they do? Uh, I think this is the easiest pick beside the Chicago Bears. Marvin, and right? I think at the end of the day, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a generational talent. Mm-hmm. I want to tell people this, though. I feel like there's a couple of more generational talent wide receivers in this draft. Say it. All right, and you know what I'm yeah. saying? So at the end yeah. of the day, as easy as this pick is, it, it, it can get a little complicated if they mm-hmm. like one more than the other one. But Marvin Harris Jr., rush up to the podium. Don't even, like, if I'm Marvin Harrison, I'm not even going to the draft. I'm just, I, I didn't pack my clothes right now, and I'm already driving to, driving to Arizona. It's it just what it is right now. Hey, Smoot, with the bad day about to get Marvin Harrison, he, he's not driving. <laughs> he's taking a private play to Arizona, baby. You know what? You talk about not going to the draft. Heck, he didn't go to the combine. He, he didn't really work out for anybody. He knows that he's ready to – he's going to be taken as the number one wide receiver regardless of what he does, all those workouts. It's a no-brainer. You, pick, you turn that card in right away. Is he the most can't miss prospect overall in the draft? Most polished prospect. Okay. Uh, and I think what's really making uh, NFL franchises love him, he's second generation football. He's all football. Mm-hmm. And I think that really intrigues people because, you know, he know from the day he get on uh, to the team, he knows how to be a pro. Yeah. Uh, and if he anything like his daddy, which he seen very much so, it's all work and no play with right. the Harrisons. Yeah. That's just what it is. Yeah, I had an opportunity to – to watch Marvin Harrison Jr. work out last year at Ohio State, and I'm observing him in the in the uh, bubble, just catching hundreds and hundreds of balls all by himself. I mean, the work ethic is, is already there. You, he's he has a PhD in route running. Since basically he can mm-hmm. walk, you know, with 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 his father, he is the most polished and most pro ready uh, player coming into this draft. Now we get into something very interesting. Midway through the, the first, first round. The first 10. Pick, yeah. yeah, right. We have the Chargers at yeah. five with the new head coach, Jim Harbaugh. They need a lot of help. Yeah. But what are they going to do here? They have a lot of options. They could maybe trade back or yeah. stay here. Uh, I got them trading back here. Okay. I have the Chargers. I've already had New England trading back okay. to 11. Now I have the Chargers trading back with the 
Las Vegas Raiders. Oh. Yes, I have the the Raiders coming up with Coach Antonio Pierce, my okay. ex-teammate. Okay. He understands. I got my quarterback on my defense. I need a quarterback for my offense. I don't see them going into the year with Aiden O'Connell. I see them going into the year with the field pick. As they walk up there, they choose J.J. McCarthy. He's a Raider. He looks like a Raider with that quarterback face. Can you believe in that? And I just think with the Devontae Adams on the outside yeah. with that running game. All right, Antonio, Coach Pierce would be like, you know what? We got a chance. We got a chance. As long as mm -hmm. we can keep him clean, keep him out of trouble. J.J. McCarthy, number five pick, Las Vegas Raiders. You know what, Smooth? I, so I already gave J.J. to the uh, Minnesota Vikings. I get it. Yeah. Where I can see where the Chargers are trading out of this pick, but I'm going to think they're going to trade – to another division rival, the Denver Broncos, who also need oh. a quarterback. They're going to yeah. come up. Sean Payton knows how important it is. He's going to give up a King's ransom because it's going to cost to trade with a division foe. Give up a King's ransom to come up, and they're taking Drake May. Drake. Oh, really? Drake. So we just got these At guys. Fox? We just got these guys switched. He got yeah. JJ going to the Vikings. Okay. And I got Drake going to the Vikings. And he got him. So we just switched the, the, the third and the fifth pick. I can't imagine Drake May going to five, falling to five. No, you know what? Drake May don't look like a Raider. Like he wouldn't look like he, he look, needs to stay on the East Coast. You know, like he look good as a Viking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's something about it that you, you, like to be a to be a Raider. Like, you got to have a little edge, though. You got to be a little dirty. Yeah, you got to be a little funky. <laughs> Spook, smooth. I'm, I'm not giving it to the Raiders. I'm giving it to the Broncos. You you don't see the John Elway kind of big arm, big boy, big boy arm. He's he's kind of the, he's kind of a Bronco. He's definitely not a Raider. He's a Bronco. All right. I can get on I can get on that train because he reminds me of Jake the Snake Plumber. And that, uh, hey, a great yeah. Bronco right there. So I can see him bootlegging in my high stadium. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can see that happening. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you agree, disagree, yeah. whatever you have a point you want to make, make it in the comments because we want to know what you have to say. I'm going to read very quickly. I'm going to pay some bills. Hey, pay them busy. Take a little breath and yeah. then we're going to get right back at it. Let's talk about Honda. Let's do it. Explore the sophisticated, sleek look of the CRV Hybrid and Accord Hybrid, Honda's most powerful electrifying vehicles yet. Conquer the unpaved road in one of Honda's rugged SUVs and trucks like the Pilot Trail Sport, Honda's most capable SUV ever. Or experience the thrilling performance of the fun-to-drive Honda Civic with an available, if you want it, turbocharged engine. Get power, performance, and ruggedness with Honda. Find a Honda perfect for you at your local Washington area Honda dealer today and RTS recycle track systems mm -hmm. transforming the way that commercial businesses and communities manage waste and recycling they combine the power of AI with premium customer service to optimize waste pickup schedules ensuring timely and efficient collections to keep our neighborhoods cleaner and greener bam there it is visit RTS.com to learn more about how they can help your business manage waste more responsibly you must have went to Mississippi State the way you read it <laughs> <laughs> they learned me right. <laughs> they can't read that Mississippi State. What you talking about, man? <laughs> he didn't go to John Carroll. We know that. <laughs> so hey, I it's, will say this. It's, hey, Jinx, Jinx, I will say this, yeah. though. You made me about to go get a Honda. I got to buy my son. <laughs> the next time we see you, roll into the parking lot, we'll be, well, I'll be damned. Lundy got Lundy. himself a Honda. With his elbow out the one. <laughs> It's a Get Loud podcast, Smoot, London Jinx, and we're going through the top 10 picks in the NFL draft, which brings us to the New York football Giants at six. The New York Giants. It took me a while to figure it was out because a lot of mock draft got them taking Malik neighbors. Yeah, right? I've seen that. A lot of them, and I really do think they need a, a legit outside receiver. They do need help there. I just feel like. You can get this draft so full of receivers. You can get a Xavier Leggett in the second. You can get a Worthy at the bottom of the first round. Yeah. I just feel like they say, you know what? To help Daniel Jones, do we help him by protecting him? Or do we help him by giving him a wide receiver? I think you protect him first. Okay. So I got son of John Ock. All right. Another second generation football player, Joe Ock. It sounds like a Notre Dame tackle. He looks like a Notre Dame tackle. <laughs> he is a Notre Dame tackle. I'm going Joe Ock to New York right there. It's it, it, it just a pick that they'll make. I think it's the smart pick to make. What do you think, London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth, you and I, 
I'm not gonna say we're sharing a brain, but we agree on this. We, I feel when you look at the Giants, they allowed 85 sacks last year, most in the National Football Oof. League. You can't have your quarterback getting hit that many times. You got the opportunity to take the best tackle in the draft, the first tackle off the board. I'm in total agreement with you. Joe Alt, I love the name. He sounds like a New York Giant with that type of name. Joe Alt, mm-hmm. left tackle, put him there for the next 12 years. Forget about it. Let him protect the blind side of whoever your quarterback is for the future. And I was going to ask you about that because there was some talk early on in the draft that yeah. the Giants said, you know, uh, maybe we shouldn't have signed Daniel Jones to this long-term deal. Yeah. Maybe we go in a different direction. Now it looks like, at least for now, they're going to roll with them for the foreseeable future. What did I tell you? I don't like quarterbacks with regular names. I oh, know you don't. Daniel Jones? You can't be in there with <laughs> Daniel Jones. I'm just telling you. He is what it is. They, they'll probably have Shadur Sanders next year. You know, they, they'll probably have. They're going to find someone else. Yeah, yeah, they'll find someone Hey, Shadur is definitely not a regular type of name. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, the quarterback has to have some flair to it. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's why, like, if he ain't got a lip flair to him, if you tell me your quarterback, Willie Williams, I'll be like, okay. I can't wait to play (laughs) Willie. (laughs) And number seven, Tennessee Titans. Now, a lot of mock drafts have Joe Alt going to Tennessee to protect Will Levis. So, since you guys have Alt going to the Giants, who's going to Tennessee? Uh, We're going to stay with the fat boys. If you want to win championships, you need them guys that smell like bacon. You need guys that's 300 pounds, like to get dirty, guys that like to go take out London Fletchers. Like them type guys, that's how you go win games. On new for sure new. From Penn State, the local guy from the DMV. I got Tennessee taking the offensive lineman. Like you said, they got Will Levis. They got some wide receivers right there. They got a new offensive coordinator. They finna try to spread it out. You have to protect your blind side. Pashanu is that guy. Yes, this is this is where Tennessee's going to have a major decision to make because you got neighbors who some people may think he's the number one receiver in the draft board. I know they signed Calvin Ridley. Do they view Calvin Ridley as a true number one receiver or is he more of a two? I know they paid him a ton of money. You got opportunity yep. to get neighbors, an explosive playmaker. I Ooh. think with Brian Callahan coming over as a first-year head coach, he knows what it means to have receivers, especially big-time receivers, at your disposal. I think they're going to shake the draft up, and they're going to take Malik Neighbors, and they're going to bypass on a tackle right there. They'll get a tackle later. They're going to take Malik Neighbors at seven. Ooh, that's a stunner right oh, well, there. That, so this begs a question. You hear it every draft, but I think it's no. an interesting question I want to ask you. Okay. This seems like a situation where you're going with best player available yeah. versus need. need. Where you say, we probably yeah. don't need this, but this guy's so dynamic, we got to go with him. Well, you got Kevin Ridley on one side. You, you drafted Traylon Burks in the first round two years ago. Right. So I think with that, with that capital, and you just tr- played Kevin Ridley $80 million, I just think they're saying, you know what, let's protect Will Levis. We got some outside mm-hmm. guys, and we can, if we need more speed, maybe we can. Because, you know, the one thing I always say is, after the draft, we have this, this flow of veterans that get cut. Yep. Uh, and I think they feel like they probably can add a veteran receiver down the line instead of going with a young wide receiver here and they go offensive line. You're going think, all think in about this. Yeah, think about this. And, and let's just kind of revisit how the Cincinnati Bengals built their franchise around Joe Burrow. They went out, they got the quarterback. You remember they were talking about, hey, this is going to take the uh, – they had the fifth pick in the draft. Do they take Jamar Chase? Or do they take a tackle at that spot? I know people, because Joe Burrows had got killed his, his first year. And there was oh, a yeah, question yeah. Do they take the offensive tackle or do they take the receiver? They opted to take the receiver. And they added him with T, uh, T. Higgins and all the other receivers they had. Mm-hmm. They built yep, that board. offensive lineup later on. They got the weapons first, and then they built up the offensive line. I think Brian Callahan is going to convince them, hey, let's get these playmakers for our quarterback, first and foremost, and then let's look at building an offensive line. I think Monique Davis is going to be too good for them to pass up. That mm. brings us to eight, the Falcons, and they got to go defense now. Yeah. Right? Well, they got everything on the offense. Right, start to say. You got Drake London at wide receiver, Kyle Pitts at tight end, B. John Bijan Robinson at running now. back. You got everything sold up. They had one of the best offensive lines in football last year that nobody talked about, the Atlanta Falcons. They're deep over yeah. there. 
they they need an edge rusher. Right? And a lot of people had big bursts from Florida State going here. Mm-hmm. But the one thing about him, he's more of a power rusher, all right? Everything you dominated in college, you might not be able to just overpower these, these pros. So I think they got to go with somebody with strength and speed. Okay. I'm going Dallas Turner as the edge from Alabama that the Falcons take right here because he's a guy that can go out there and change some games. And he's a guy that can get him an edge on defense. I'm going right here with Dallas Turner. I think he's the perfect pick right there. I love that pick. I, I, you know, you look at the, uh, the Atlanta Falcons. They got offensive line. They, they, they signed Kirk Cousins in free agency. They got weapons. Defensively, they secondary is really good. What are they yep. missing? You mentioned a, uh, um, Smoot, a pass rusher. They need somebody to get after the quarterback. Dallas Turner, a dynamic rusher from the uh, from Alabama. I like him. I think that's the pick for the for the Atlanta Falcons. Get Raheem Morris a pass rusher for his defense. At nine, Bears back in the clock. Now, this is interesting. Again. Again. Do they get some help for Caleb Williams at receiver? Do they try to protect him on the O-line? You're talking about a team with DJ Moore. People forget they still got Claypool. Nobody knows. Like, they they, they got these guys. But like London said, sometimes that low-hanging fruit, you can't pass it by. You're going to say. And guess what? To me, this guy, like I think, I think receiver is one A and one B and maybe one C. Okay. Like I don't separate these guys by much, but I love. First of all, I love this guy's name. Second of all, I love his game. Wrong. That is a doomsday. <laughs> I, I, a doomsday. Like at the end of the day, man, this guy he reminds me so much of Jamar Chase. Okay. Body build, the way he beats people. Uh. One of those guys, you don't know how fast he is, but he never gets caught from behind. He's one of those guys with what I call Jerry Rice Rice. feet. So at the end of the day, I think if you lead this draft with Caleb Williams in Rome or Doomsday, you Chicago Bears have won this draft. That would be a massive conversation. That would be a massive conversation. London, you like it or no? You know, it's hard. I like like smooth thinking. However, I think they're going to go on the D-line. I like Jared Verse for them. You need another bookend for Montez Sweat. Sweat came over there and provided a, a tremendous pass rush for them. Even with Sweat, though, the, the Bears were still one of the like second or third worst uh, at getting after the quarterback last season. You had Jared Verse to Montez Sweat. Now you got two bookends on that defensive line. And you think about this. They're, they're competing with the, with the Detroit Lions in that division. They're tr- c- competing with the Green Bay Packers. They know they're going to need pass rush. They know they're going to need big people to beat them up, beat up, you know, offenses. I think they go Jared Verse. Roma Duze, for them, already having um, DJ Moore and Keenan Williams, I think that's more of a luxury pick to that offense. Yep. I, I, I think they, they're going to add Jared Verse and add to that pass rush. They, they need another pass rusher. The only reason I said Roma Doomsday because the one thing I can say with DJ, DJ is in the middle of his career, and of course they they, they brought with the trade with the Chargers. He's at the Keenan Allen is at the end of his career. I just thought they want to bring somebody at the same age to allow them to mature right. together. Well, if you're talking about someone like Malik Neighbors going yeah. back a little bit, yeah. then yeah. you say, is this guy too good to pass up? So, this that's spot? what I'm saying. Right. Like sometimes it's just too good. Yeah, yeah. Finally yeah. at ten, the New York Jets. Win now. That's what they want to it's do. Time. So it's all chips to the middle of the table with this guy. We don't know how long we got Aaron Rodgers. A A, a run. A A run. run. So what we need to do is we need we need to make sure he has the weapons he need. Garrett Wilson, the rest of those guys on the outside. Bryce Hall can run that ball. Oh, he's great. Brock Bowers mm-hmm. at tight end. To me, he's special. To me, he's one of those guys that can really break a game wide open. He's a he's a tight end that can play attached to the line. You can move him away from the line. He's too big and too fast for uh, a cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's too strong for like a cornerback. But then when you get him messed up on linebackers, he he just routes them up. Mm-hmm. So I think he's the guy. He's the best yak tight end in this draft. I go Brock Bowers to the New York Jets, giving him a chance to surpass the hurting Bills. I know they hurt you. The Bills are <laughs> ailing right now. <laughs> I think this will put them over the hump and get him a chance to compete with Miami in that division right now. Listen, you mentioned A.A. Rob, the most important player for the New York Jets. He only played four snaps last year. In those four snaps, he was under pressure, I'm thinking, all four snaps. Yeah, they signed 
Smith from the Giants, as, I mean, from the Dallas Cowboys to play tackle. But you know he's always hurt. They brought in Morgan Moses to play tackle for them. He's he's dealing with some health issues. I think they continue to add to that offensive line. I think they take Troy Fatano out of uh, Washington. You can play him mm-hmm. at guard or tackle. You int- you get more protection for an a older, aging quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, if he has time to throw that football, he's going to shred you. I think they add another offensive lineman. I think it's Fatano out of Washington at the 10th at the pick for the New York Jets. See, I wish I had my my Fred Kuyper hair right now, so I can hold up, so I can hold up this, this championship cup. Because I think I blew London out in this you mock do? draft. Aww. Yeah, most definitely I did it. Like when we go back, okay, next week and, and see whose draft, okay, chart was closer. I'm telling you, it was Kuyper's. <laughs> hey, I could. You know what? That that would be a great thing for us to really look at it. Go side by side comparison and be like, okay, you know what? McShay was better, right? He was right on this one. Um, Kuiper was right on that one. And I'm talking about you, know, you and me, Fred. I think I yeah. think I smoked you up. Let's make sure the fans <laughs> kind of see who's, who's my draft is better. London, before we let you go, I'm going to ask this to both of you guys. What is one player that we haven't mentioned in the top ten? And I'll start with you. That you're really high on that you think is going to be a great pro, regardless of where he's drafted. And I don't know if he's going to get drafted in the first round or be early second round. But keep an eye out for Bo Nix. Bo okay. Nix, I think, we'll look, at, we'll look back at this draft, you know, two or three years down the road and say, man, this guy may should have been possibly the third quarterback taken in this draft, something like that. Bo Nix, you look at what he did at Oregon over the last two years, I think he's a phenomenal quarterback. I can't wait to see him play. And, and if he ends up in the right spot, I know we can say that about a lot of quarterbacks. But Bo Nix, I think he's going to be an absolute superstar in this league at the quarterback position. That's who I had going to the Broncos. Oh, Bo yeah? Nix. Like, Bo Nix to me at the Broncos fit, especially with Sean Payton. When mm-hmm. I mean, Bo Nix reminds me of a twitchier, faster kind of Rex Grossman explosive arm build. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 I see him as a Bronco. They certainly need a quarterback now. They're behind it. The, man, they're paying Russell Wilson still gobs of money. Russell! Oh, yeah. Russell! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would say uh, Cooper DeGene. Okay. Cornerback, Iowa. Iowa. I, I think he is. He's spe- a ball hawk. I think he's spectacular. I think he's a great athlete. He adds to the return game instantly. He can get in and play inside nickel. He can play outside corner. He can play uh, safety. And the bad part about it, this is going to really hurt me. Fan base do not get mad at me. I think he's going to be a Philadelphia Eagle. You think so? And this going to hurt me so bad. It's going to hurt me bad. Because you appreciate the game, but not the team. Yeah, I appreciate the game. I don't appreciate the city of Philadelphia as a whole. <laughs> that is the future Hall of Famer, Washington legend, London Fletcher. London, we're going to continue the pod, but thanks for being with us. I right, appreciate it, fellas. Always love hearing from London. Always. Yeah. That's my guy. Future Yellow Jack. Yeah, he deserves it, man. Mm-hmm. And we have more to talk about. Let's face the bills first. Yep. Be thinking about... What you've been watching, yeah. we're going to go into comments as well because we get some great comments here on the show, uh, too. All right, all right. We're going to start with Honda. Guys, you have to explore the sophisticated, sleek look of the CRV Hybrid and Accord Hybrid, Honda's most powerful electrifying vehicles yet. Conquer the unpaved road in one of Honda's rugged SUVs and trucks like the Pilot Trail Sport, Honda's most capable SUV ever, or experience the thrilling performance of the fun to drive Honda Civic with an available turbocharged engine. Get power performance and ruggedness with Honda. Find the Honda perfect for you at your local Washington area Honda dealer. Mm-hmm. And come on, guys. You know what it is. You know what it is. Brought to Seeky. you by. Sponsor of this pod. Yes. The official ticketing partner of the Washington Commanders. We're talking about Seat Geek. The deal is finalized. They are the newest member of the Commanders family. If you haven't heard the name yet, get used to it. You'll be hearing it a lot more this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Commanders games or any other live event in the DMV, Seat Geek is the place to do it. The official ticketing partner of your Washington Commanders. So, Commanders fans can fan. Go on, fan. Go on, fan and command. Right? <laughs> do both of them at the same time. You know what? Let's begin with the comment of the week. Comment of the week. Who do we got, Jinx? Well, we got our guy, Gary Birch, 4974. I'd I, I, I be so intrigued with people like Twitter handles. Oh, I know. Like, what show, does that mean? Yeah, we never know. Is it a combination to your safe? Like, 
I wonder, like, because athletes, we usually combine our football numbers, mm-hmm. past and present. Yeah. That's how we come up with our little handles. I always wondered, how do people do it? Do they do birthdays or do they do, I don't uh, know, like, like other numbers that, you know, I, I, I Promising to him? I'm going to go to Gary's house. There's going to be a keypad. I'm yeah. like, I bet it's 4974. Yeah. And you're going to put 49 <laughs> right in his door. <laughs> yeah, you, you're right. So we were talking about, I think we were talking about maybe Caitlin Clark. Yeah. But, and comparing her, which we, you hear this comparison a lot. Yeah. He or she is the Michael Jordan of blank. This is Gary talking. Yeah. Sums it up. Across life, not just sports. No one else has that. Uh, Taylor Swift. Oh, God. She is the Michael Jordan of entertainment. Did you see she dropped her album that oh, people said uh, they had uh, up and down reviews about it? I think she sold uh, like a million records in like a day. I believe it. Like it's like breaking re- Like she is the Michael Jordan of entertainment. Is that why Jordan is the GOAT of all time? Because you say this person, regardless of their particular field, yeah. is the Michael Jordan of whatever? Because he changed it. Mm-hmm. Magic and Bird brought it to the forefront. Jordan changed it. Mm-hmm. Jordan hasn't played basketball in 30, 40 years. He has the number one basketball shoe. Still. Like, he's not a player. He's an entity. Like, tiger entity. Mm-hmm. Like, some of these guys can't be compared to their counterparts. It, 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 I'm sorry. They have their own stratosphere. Yep. It's like the cave in Vietnam. <laughs> Dumb move. It got its own atmosphere and it has his own ecosystem yep that's michael jordan that's taylor swift she has her own ecosystem oh don't even get me started on taylor i'm gonna i'm gonna withhold myself i'm gonna take a uh. <laughs> <laughs> what is your most i think we're on the same this is how i know sometimes we're right in sync we're brothers yes most yeah. hated commercial and the thing is is that you came over to me this morning go jace what commercial do you hate and you go i just said that so you gotta tell I, I, listen like, sometimes when you watch the TV, because I'm a big TV head, I love watching mm-hmm. TV, and some commercials just come on, my head go down, my stomach start to turn, I'm like, man, I just, I'm going to get out and take a walk. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't fathom listening to it again. And I know the fans going to get on me in the comments, say what you got to say, but if you're going to tell the truth for yourself, you know you hate this commercial. 1-800-CARS. For kids. one eight seven seven cars for kids I yeah. hate it. Oh, oh, I could be in my car and it come on. I'll pull over and get out. Turn the radio off. I've had people in DMV say I've never heard that commercial. I'm like, how could you not? not? It's all over the radio. It's all over your TV. And then the commercial comes on at home and these kids are fake playing these instruments. <laughs> and not only do you want me to get these kids my car that they can't even drive because they ain't got no license. Mm-hmm. You want me to say, at the end they say, and now accepting houses. <laughs> it's like, wait, you taking houses like, too? The kid need a house too? My God. First of all, hate it. Hate the commercial. Should never be played again. All right, can we all agree on that? Do you agree the commercial should never be played again? First of all, nobody's playing an instrument. I'm always looking at that kid. He's just swaying up oh. running, not even playing anything. And these kids have got to be in like their 30s now. That, that's not that's what old. They, listen, they are not kids anymore. No. Matter of, yeah, they do take homes because they need to live in one. <laughs> like at the end of the day, no, you got to tell the truth. You hate this commercial as much as we do. You just don't want to say it. And that's fine. I will say one thing. Imagine if you're at, these kids are probably what, maybe 20s. I don't know. Yeah. Imagine they're in a bar or something. Somebody. Commercial pops on. You're yeah. like, hey. This see, see that kid playing the bass or not playing the bass? That's me. And then I'd be like, I hate your guts. I'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to buy you a drink. Yeah. <laughs> I hate yo. Get out. Get out the bar. All right? I can't drink with you. All right? Right. Because you ruined my life. All right? <laughs> the more I hear this commercial, it just it bites me. But then I got another one. Oh, I was going to ask you. Say it. J.G. Wentworth. <laughs> Do you not hate the J.G. Wentworth commercial? It's like, what is it? I just got an annuity and I need cash no. now. Hey, no, you can't have my annuity, JG Wentworth. <laughs> like, JG Wentworth. Like, but I understand. They made the the commercial intentionally annoying so it sticks. It's working. We're talking about no, it. No, it sticks in your head to the point where migraines. Oh, my I, I, I got headache pills that's got J.G. Wentworth with them. <laughs> I, all I'm saying, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know about J.G. Wentworth if it wasn't for this bad, bad commercial. But 
if if I could do anything to lose that commercial, I would. Like it, it, it's it, now. Also, this one, this is a throwback right here. Okay. Do you remember the Quiznos commercials? Oh wait, the really weird ones where it didn't make any sense at all. Like I forget what they used. I I, I thought it was a hand person or something. It was the oh, ugly person, the yes. ugly thing. It was the thing thing. I right? the Quizno commercial. I like. I can't eat a Quizno sub after watching this. <laughs> the, 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 the dude looks terrible. Like, <laughs> I want to know who was at the meeting, and they said, you know what? This is our new mascot. Right. I'd be like, we're not going to make any money. How did that, like, make it through? How did it pass through it? Yeah. The Quizno. I think they called him the Quizno. I don't know what it was. It was terrible. I just want to hold these people accountable, Jinx. <laughs> That's what I want to do. I want to hold these people accountable, and I want them to understand what they're doing to our daily lives. That's what I want to do. On Wednesday, ticket to the draft. New pod dropping on Wednesday on Spotify and Apple. Command Center special. It is live with B. Mitch and Santana from yes. Detroit. That's also on from Wednesday. From the D. From the D. And then on Thursday night. Yeah. We're going to be here. Yeah. We're going to be in Detroit. You and me yes. are going to be at Franklin Hall we will be. in D.C. Coverage starts at 630. They're going to be checking in with us. They're going to have all the bases covered. I'm talking Logan, Santana, yeah. London, B. Mitch, Bryant. Everyone's going to be in the house. Yeah. So come see us live in D.C. Because, again, come coverage starts us. at 630. But we're going to be there. Yeah, we're going to be there. Franklin Hall. We'll see you there, fans. That's it for the Get Loud Podcast. We'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>